So we're going to look at how to work with Likert scales in Microsoft Forms and most importantly, Excel, particularly using Power Query. So a Likert scale is something like this, where you've got questions going down and across in columns, you have different options that people can select. So for example, um, email teams, chat app, etc. Um, and then do they use that zero to 15% of the time, 15 to 30%, etc. Or a very, very common use case as well is highly disagree, disagree, neutral, uh, agree, or strongly agree, things like that. So you can get to Microsoft Forms from your app launcher by going here. It's a lot like Google Forms if you've used that before. And you can, for example, add a new question. And then in the question type, you can choose here and you can choose a Likert scale. So over here, um, it will give you that option, the statement, and then the options. So you could have like highly disagree, uh, disagree, neutral, etc. And I'm going to delete that for now because this survey's already gone out to 58 people. This is real data that I've used. And I've already got responses. And Forms does a great job of automatically plotting this for you like this. But we're going to want to analyze this in Excel and even use some filters to do that. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to click Open in Excel. Note, if you do this through Microsoft Forms and start this way, you have Open in Excel. And then every time someone sends you a new response, then you have to re-download the file. There is another way to do that through Excel Online, and I've got another video that I'll link to which explains how to do that. So this is the Excel data over here, and we see that I have how many of them use email, how many of them use Teams, uh, chat app, etc. So these three are the columns for the Likert scale. And then I have some other columns that I've recorded as well. For example, Approximately how many hours per week do they use Teams? Approximately how many emails do they receive per day? Um, completion time, all this stuff didn't come up. And then which team features do they use? And which of my other courses have they attended? Microsoft Forms does a great job of um, putting those together, which is a lot less easy to do manually. But I've got another video where I explain that. In Excel 2016 or more recent, you can go to data and choose from table or range, and it opens up the Power Query Editor. The Power Query Editor is a fantastic achievement, the biggest thing to have happened to Excel in 20 years. It is amazing. It has all these four new tabs with completely different things about data transformation. So what we're going to do is we're going to first uh, identify which are the Likert columns, so these three. So I'm going to click on them. Shift click to select all three. I'm going to go to transform and choose unpivot and unpivot only selected columns. If you don't have that in an, an earlier version, you can choose unpivot columns, but generally unpivot only selected is uh, more future proofed in case you get more columns later on. So what it's done is it's shifted. If I go back here from 58 rows and 12 columns into 11 columns and 174 rows. So fewer columns, but a lot more rows because every row, effectively this, is now becoming three rows. One for email, one for Teams, one for chat. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. I'm going to um, rename the columns. So I'm going to say Teams use hours per week. I'm going to uh, say emails per day. And I don't need a lot of these columns, so I'm going to go to choose columns and choose this one, this one, attribute and value. I love the unpivot command, uh, but let's simplify a bit more. So click on this cell, right click and choose replace values. And it pops up with a value to find directly in there. And I'm going to say this is just a chat app. And I don't need email two. I'm going to replace with email. It did that because there was another column called email as well. Um, and now I'm going to want to put this into bands. 
So to put it into bands, I just need to effectively go from this to say, um, this number will be minus two, this number will be plus one, this number will be in the middle, etc. Now, some people go one, two, three, four, five. I always do zero as the midpoint. So you can just see on an average basis whether it's uh, below or above zero. I find that much easier. So from here, go to add column and conditional column. And I'm going to say if value equals zero to 15 percent, then say minus two. Add clause if value equals 15 to 30 percent, then minus one. If value Now, if you write text, you need to put capital letters to match this, because if you put a lower letter, it won't pick it up. Uh, I always use all of them in the else column and then else if. And then in this case, I would write maybe a check thing uh, rather than having this one left out, because otherwise, if I misspelled something, then it won't come up in the right way and I won't be able to identify it. So new column name, this is going to be rating like this, make that a number. Let's rename some columns. Going to do the replace trick again, to always, just make them as short as possible, really. And when you're done, on the home tag, click close and load. And that will load it into a new worksheet with this data. Just a quick way that I would then analyze it would be to select this column and then this rating column at the end. And I would choose to insert a box and whisker chart. I find a box and whisker chart is the best way to see not only the average, but also the high and low. Notice for this one though, we don't need 2.5 and two, so I can format axis to start at minus two and end at plus two. You can then also go to insert and choose a slicer. So I'm going to choose that for Teams hours per week and emails per day. And it can show you this like that. So you can filter it to get it to show you more. So here I'm on a website, simplypsychology.org. Likert scales are used a lot in psychology. So strongly agree to strongly disagree like this frequency. Uh, importance quality generally it's five or seven point scales always an odd number and also it is something where it's sort of linear between each one so the difference from this to this is roughly the same as the difference from this to this etc uh, when this says how do you analyze data then it looks at summarizing using a median or a mode not a mean but personally i don't like using these. I prefer using a box and whisker chart, and that's what I'm going to show you later on. It does say display them in a bar chart. If you are going to analyze it, though, I'm going to just copy and paste these three data points. And you want to get, for example, the median and the mode. Unfortunately, you can't use these in pivot tables nor can you use them with median ifs, etc. But if you have the newest version of Excel Office 365, you can just nest a an if inside these. So I can say equals median, and then I'm looking at if this column equals this value, then return this column. Notice that because I'm in a, a table, it's just giving me the column name, otherwise return blank, speech marks, speech marks, close your brackets for the if and then for the median, and that is one, minus one and two, and mode equals mode, and do the same. Now you have two modes, um, mode single is what I would probably do, but we have the same idea. So if this column equal to this value comma then this one otherwise speech marks speech marks blank close your brackets for if close your brackets for mode and then you can get it popping up like that so mode mult will um, essentially can give you 
a multiple outputs if they are the same for multiple ones, which would probably happen. So same idea, if this equals this comma this, otherwise return speech marks, speech marks, close your brackets once, twice. Um, the thing with mode multi is that it could return multiple values. In this case, they're the same, but in some cases it could return multiple values. But this is how you can compare it using the advice that it was given at the beginning, the median, the mode, etc. Another way to do the median is to, from here, go to select your table, insert pivot table from table or range. Add this to the data model. You need to do this in order to get custom formulas using DAX to work. Right click on the table name and choose add measure. Then from here, we're going to do equals median. And then we're going to do the median of the rating like that. And then give it a name. So this is median check DAX formula. No errors, press okay. Now we have our median and we can then click on app and click on median as well. And we get it showing like that. So minus two, one, minus one, we can compare it with this calculation. Yeah, so it's the same calculation there. It doesn't do the mode, unfortunately, with DAX. So if you like this video, my name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos that I do every week on Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Zoom, Google Sheets, Power BI. So subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.